If you saw my last video, you know I spoke about wearing some VGA fans. And I'd done some footage for it, but had opted not to do the video. Well, I've had a change of heart. I've decided I will do the video. And here is the train that started it all. This is heading towards Fenny Compton. It's an MOD train. I believe the head coach was 6 Mike 48 And it's the vans on the back that gave me the inspiration for this project. It was the weathering of the Backman Class 66 that inspired me to continue with my weathering projects. I had gone out and got myself a brand new airbrush, uh, a Neo by Awata. The uh, older airbrushes had given in and uh, weren't that great in the first place. Fortunately, the old Spraycraft compressor worked quite nicely with the new airbrush, so I didn't have to get a new one of them. Not yet, anyway. Van-wise, I had six VGA vans. If you've watched my previous video, you know that I decided to change eras, and the vans had reached what I like to call the to sell pile. But after seeing the MOD train pass by and feeling inspired by the vans on the back, they made it to the keep pile, and I got them out, ready to give them a good hard weathering. Over the years, I've managed to get quite a few photographs of VGA vans in their various states. One of the fortunate things of being where I am located for work is that there's a goods yard just outside the box and I can get many photos of the VJs that have been stored there for a number of years. I'm also fortunate enough to be able to get close-up photos when the vans are stored in the sidings outside Didcot TMD. Here you can get some real proper close-ups and details of what they look like. So armed with these photos and screenshots taken from the video, I had enough evidence to be able to really weather these models to a prototypical standard. The first thing to do would be remove the rail freight branding off the vans. This was quite a difficult job and I had to go through several different types of product to try and find the right method. I tried IPA but that attacked the silver paint underneath. I tried some nail varnish remover uh, both in a bottle and pads but again it seemed to attack the paint. The silver paint was very vulnerable to any sort of chemical. In the end, I had to go with tea cut. I'm not a big fan of tea cut, it leaves a bit of a residue afterwards and always a bit of a pain to clean off. However, this was the best thing for the project. On the plus side, not all the vans would need the branding removing. If I look closely at some of the photos I've taken, you can see that some of the logos have been painted over. And that was that. The branding had been removed. Some of the vans had taken a few heavy hits from the chemicals used, but in particular the IPA seemed to strip away the silver. This van in particular had also lost paint on the top corner, although I believe it had arrived to me in this condition. However, I wasn't too fussed. I would patch up with another silver paint, and once it had been weathered, it should all blend in nicely, and you'd never know it was there. Before patching up the silver though, the first job I wanted to do was fade the yellow. In all the photos that I've taken, that lovely bright yellow that had been applied in the days of BR had faded to an almost salmon pink colour underneath. Possibly because it had been painted over the original Rail Freight Red. To achieve this, I mixed up various shades of yellow using Vallejo colours and then added a very, very small amount of pink to the mix. A surprising result was achieved. There we go then, um, that's all the original, that's the tone down and I think that's quite, like, quite well. Not quite the pink that I will get, but it's, uh, it'll do. So now I've got to do the uh, up one. I made sure all six vans had slightly different coloured ends. And that's because, again, when I look back at the photos, nothing was ever uniform. They'd obviously all had 
different treatment over their lifetime. They'd have been in different weather conditions and exposed to the sun at different points. And so therefore, they were never going to look the same. With the ends complete, the next job was patching up the silver. In some of the photos, you can see where it's been graffitied in places and then the workshop has painted over in any silver colour and there's no match. Of course, in some cases, I needed to match the paintwork on the Backman vans because I had accidentally removed the silver paint. As you can see in this shot, I went through several types of silver paint to try and find a match and I couldn't find one. I tried rail match Foster Yeoman silver, I tried Humbrol silver, I tried aluminium, I tried the Vallejo colours and nothing was really working. However, I persevered on and just decided to find the closest match I could and that would have to do, relying on the weathering to blend it all in. I identified which six vans I'd like to copy from the original train. In some cases, I decided that one side of the van would be one of the vans in the train and the other side would be the other. And therefore, each side is based on a prototype and looks correct. And in particular, I did this with the graffitied van. One side has the Peaks tagline and the other one has the Three Him tagline. I also applied new transfers to the vans, replacing the old BR flashes with the new yellow flashes. Some of the vans also had DB branding, and I applied them to the vans as well. In some cases, some of the vans haven't been cleaned, but the graffiti has been painted over. So, to represent this, I made sure that the silver panels were taped up where the representation of painted over would be, and left the other parts exposed for weathering. But before I could weather the vans, I had to make sure the detailing had been finished. In particular, painting the handrails white and all the other accessories on the ends of the vans. This would be my next job. Once the white had been done, it was then time to move on to the weathering. First job was to make the ends of the vans look rusty, as they do these days, and I used the photos I'd taken to make sure that I put the rust patches in the right places. You can see here I'm achieving this effect by using a mix of Tamiya paints and AK weathering washes. And eventually, all six vans had their ends weathered. One of the things I decided not to do was weather the algae that grew on the end of the vans on these particular models. If you look at some of the photos that I have, you can see that where the vans have been stored for some time, there's a lot of green algae growth around the bottom of the vans. In the end, I decided that was just one detail that was going a little too far, and I thought it might spoil the effect. So I opted not to do it. So with the ends complete, the next job would be to get the airbrush out and spray the vans. However, each van is individual. It's going to need its own bespoke, unique weathering. So I can't just spray them all brown and say, job well done. As you can see here, before I got the airbrush out, I prepared each van individually to match the one that it was going to be from the video. So this is the van that I was doing that is going to have the silver panels where it's been painted over the graffiti. So this has just had NATO brown sprayed on it, which by Tamiya. And then I put some of the, it's called, I think it's called L I J N gray. So put the light misting of that, that went on the roof as well. And then I've had some rubber black and I've just sprayed that on the roof as well. And then for the frame, 
I've used Life Colors Track Dirt. Now, I like the colors from Life Color, and when you use it with a brush, they're brilliant. I find them really hard to work with airbrush wise. They tend to sort of um, puddle and pull when you spray it. If you don't get the consistency right, they can come out really wet because they're quite a wet paint as it is, sort of, they're very thin. Um, and trying to thin it down to get it right uh, is a real dark art with them. Sometimes I can do it, and sometimes I can't. In this case, I really struggle. Um, now, this bottom frame already has an 80 brown on it, and I've just gone over a little bit. It's all a bit uniform at the moment, uh, and I'm going to spray something over the top of that just to sort of break it up a bit. Uh, and one of the other vans I've done is this one here, which is going to be this van which has the Peaks Graffiti on it. And as you can see, it's just very, very dirty. The ribs are slightly lighter in color, but I've been doing it as just really mucky brown. So that's what I've been doing on here. I've just been cleaning off the ribs at the moment, just using a bit of Tamiya um, acrylic thinner. You just get a cotton bud and just wipe away the paint of the ribs. It looks really easy. Um, I just noticed on the video though, I think they need to do that bottom rib because that's actually quite clean. Seems to have a bottom of mine. Um, so this is the same. This was the NATO brand with the greys. And then it's had the track dirt sprayed on the underframe and on the bodywork this time. The, the greys on the top. And then I tried to highlight the dirt around the ribs by using the rubber black. Um, this is one of the first greys I've had of trying to sort of head the uh, highlight and you see it's a bit wonky in places, a bit heavy in places, but my next job is to just get some Tamiya Brown and I'm just going to spray over that and then that will give this a bit more of a weathering so it's not as clean as it currently looks and hopefully that will then blend the black in as well. As I slowly worked my way through the vans, they all did indeed receive their own bespoke, unique weathering. This van here was particularly pleased with the shading around the ribbing. I used Tamiya NATO Black for this. The van would eventually receive graffiti, and that is the reason why the data panels have all been covered over. When you look at the van in the video, you can see that they have actually just been spray painted. There was an extensive use of masking tape on this project but it served me very well. Well, in most cases it did. Unfortunately, one of the vans that had received the DB branding had accidentally been caught by the masking tape and it pulled the branding logo off, which was most unfortunate and would have to be reapplied later on. The other thing I'd have to consider for the vans was the explosive stickers that are placed all over the panels. When you look at the vans, you can sometimes see remnants of the sticker left, and in other places there's a sort of lighted dirt patch where the sticker has been put on and it's either protected the van for some time from weathering, or when it's been removed, it's removed the dirt with it. To achieve this, I will again have to be using masking tape, cut into small tiny squares placed in certain positions on the van to represent where these stickers once were. So over here I'm going to do the other DB Cargo branded van that was in the train. Um, this one doesn't have the silver on the bottom, it's just got a little patch here, and then a few patches here where it's obviously graffiti's been painted over. And then we've got a few markings where the explosive stickers were. So that's going to be this van, which has the rail freight branded painted over, rather than being pulled off, as you can see in the van, which was there. So that's how that one's going to be done. So again, I'm going to mask it up where the silver panelling should be, and also see that the data panels have been cleaned up so they need masking over and then stuff a bit there definitely needs to be masking tape so I'm saying one of the explosive stickers. So I'm gonna do this one. Happy with the first two vans I decided to then move on to the remaining four. These wouldn't require so much masking tape but would still require it in certain places, in particular where the silver patchwork was. I'd also cut this small square masking tape to represent the explosive stickers that had been placed all over the vans during their lifetime. One of the things I'd have to do as I progressed through the weathering of these vans would be to remove the masking tape to represent where a sticker had been applied, removed 
and in the van continued in traffic and weathered on the now exposed patch. The other thing to consider would be the data panels on the vans and the instructions on opening the doors. When you look closely at most of my photos, you can see that these parts have been cleaned off from time to time. And it's actually only in a few spots where they've been painted over, mostly where they've been graffitied. And so the weathering commenced. Sometimes things didn't quite go to plan. These three vans look particularly rusty more than weathered, and I'd have to use the dark grey to try and tone things down a little bit. Okay, so I'm concentrating back on the, uh, this van and you can see I've taped it up, taped the roof and then I'm just going to remove all the bits of masking tape I put on to protect panels and represent uh, explosive stickers where they've been ripped off. So you can see I've just concentrated the darker colours along the ribs again. Uh, I think I might just clean them up like I've done on the previous van just to um, sort of expose them. Although on there they look just as mucky as the sides to be honest so I'll have a think about that before I do that. Um, and then I'm just going to knock up some brown with a little bit of desert yellow just to vary the tone because I've already used the brown as sort of the undercoat and then just give it a light misting over the top and then that should finish that van and its body sides. And so I continued with the weathering of the vans and here I'm going to talk about how I got on with them. The part that I've left tape on is where they've been repainted um, so I'll do that next and then probably just give that a little light dusting over. Um, as you can see they're all various different tones and they've come out quite nicely so um, what I've done for most of the vans is just use that mix of the uh, desert yellow and the brown just to give it a dusting over for the final fix um, you can see then it just blends that silver patches where I'm trying to represent the uh, stickers being peeled off and taking the dirt with them or you know just covering up the body side whilst it got weathered so they're all looking pretty good. Uh, last van to concentrate on body sides before I move on to the roofs and just finish the roofs off is uh, the other DB branded van. Now this one's really grubby and dirty um, and so I haven't used the uh, desert yellow brown mix on this one because I thought that would line it up too much. So I'm just going to go around and do the same as what I did on this van. Just shade the uh, ribs just give it a bit of darker colour there. Then I'll go back over with a sort of brownie red colour just to finish things off. Um, and then what I'm going to need to do on all the bodies is put a coat of matte varnish on because you can see that this paint scratches off really easy. So there's obviously no key to that silver underneath, um, which is a bit concerning after all the effort I've put in to find that out now. But hopefully the varnish spray will hold that on. One of the issues I had when wearing the vans was that the Backman silver paint didn't have a particularly good key and the weathering could easily be scratched off. To get around this, I sprayed the all six vans with Tamiya clear matte varnish in hope that this would seal the weathered paint and prevent any scratching. The vans themselves, I thought, were starting to look pretty damn good. With the vans airbrushed, it was then time to move on to the silver panelling that had been repainted in the workshop. To do this, I decided to brush the silver on. And this is because, again, looking at photos, you can see that they have actually been brushed on. There's no real care taken. They've just been done to patch over any graffiti. Some of the patchwork had also been painted over the data panels. And so you had to pay particular attention to what was exposed and what had been painted over. I done three coats eventually of the silver just to get everything looking right. And here you can see the difference between the before and after. 
I would finish the silver patchwork on these vans before moving on to the graffiti on the final van. As I said before, I would paint one side one of the graffiti vans and the other side based on the other. I'll go back to myself a few months ago and talk you through my plan. Right, this van is going to be the one that's going to have the graffiti, uh, as seen in this shot here. Um, now, I think it says Peaks. I'm not entirely sure. I suspect that's a P. And I've had a little practice drawing it out just on the paper here. And I'm going to pop it on there. Um, some of the graffiti is a bit hard to distinguish. This says I'm back because another uh, screen grab I did um, shows that. And then I'm not quite sure what this is. Kind of looks like a ski mask or something. No idea what this is. They look like um, Among Us characters. I think that's a cat. Uh, it says box up there and there's, well, two wheels, shall we say. <laughs> Could be something else. Uh, and that's that side. So I'm going to give it a go and then I'm going to use one of the other vans uh, to do the other side. Here we are then, I've uh, now graffitied up this van, so I've done it as per one of the other vans in the train on the other side, so it's got uh, this graffiti, which I think it says three him. Um, again, it's sort of quite hard to get it to match 100% accurate, because obviously it's uh, zoomed in screenshot from the video, but that's that side. And then over here, that's the peak side now all finished with the uh, little sort of big doggled guy that says I'm back, the kind of, uh, I don't know if it's an M or if it's one of those characters from the uh, video game that I mentioned earlier, it's name passes me now, Among Us, Among Us, uh, there's the peaks with the um, sort of well, it's been painted over the graffiti before, so it's been graffiti painted and graffitied again. Uh, there's a sort of cat, I think it said oaks in the corner, that's as close as I could get. I couldn't work out what this was, so I've just done some sort of robot thing on legs. Um, I think that looks pretty good. If I find a screenshot of that one. There we go. There's that there. To that there. I think that's going all right. And that was that. Six weathered vans that have taken me some time, but I am particularly pleased in how they turned out. Certainly a train to be proud of. If you've liked this video, then please click the like button. If you want to see more, then click the subscribe button. And hopefully I'll see you again next time. Thanks for watching.